Welcome to our lesson about exporting your project so you can play it on a CD in a CD player. In this lesson, we'll learn how to save your Cubase project so that it's ready to burn to a CD. The first step is to have a listen to the entire mix, watching the output channel on the mixer to make sure that there is no clipping. Let's go to Devices and launch the mixer. Here's the stereo out channel to which all of our output is routed. Even if our individual tracks don't clip the output, when played all together, they might bring up the sound into the red and cause the clip meter to light up. So make sure you listen to what you want to mix down in real time to make sure that you're not clipping the output channel. Otherwise, you could end up with some surprising and unwelcome distortion on your mix down. Before we close the mixer, there's one more thing we've got to do. For the output channel, let's click the Edit button. The VST Output Channel Settings window for the Stereo Out channel opens. Let's right-click in some empty part of this dialog window and click Always on top. We need to insert what's called a dithering plugin. Click in the first insert slot. And let's scroll down this list of Cubase default plugins and choose the UV 22 hour dithering plugin from the list. We need this plugin because I recorded my project at a 24 bit depth. CDs require a 16 bit depth. So I use this dithering plugin to convert the digital music data. If I simply try to export it at 24 bit depth or export it to 16 bit without the plugin, one of two things can happen. My CD player simply won't be able to read it, or it'll convert, but maybe with some artifacts and other junky noise inserted. I talk at length about how dithering works in my course on recording, mixing, and mastering. So for more detailed information, please see the chapter on dithering. This blue button here means that the plugin is on. That's called the bypass button. And let's close the output channel settings window. And let's also close the dithering plugin. This button here controls the insert states. When it's blue, your inserts are active, and if it's yellow, your inserts are bypassed or basically off. So right now we want this button to be blue. Now we're ready to close the mixer. And let's restore our project window maximizing. Before we can export, we need to tell Cubase how much of the project to export. We do this by setting what are called the locators. The left and right locators are these triangular symbols in the ruler. Let's drag the left ruler to the beginning of our project. And let's drag the right locator out to the end of our audio events. We'll just leave a little bit of extra space. The part of the project included between the locators is what you're going to export. If your locators look like, let's say this, then you're only going to export between bars 1 to 17. The transport panel shows you the positions of the locators in the unit of measurement you've selected for the primary time display. Let's switch it to time format to see the locator's position in minutes and seconds. The locator should color the ruler blue, as you see here. If your ruler looks red, it means your left locator is on the wrong side or vice versa. You've either dragged out the right locator too far to the left, or you've dragged out the left locator well over the right locator. If your ruler looks red and you continue with the export, your export will fail, so keep this in mind. And let's position our locators. At the beginning and end of the audio events we want to capture, leaving a little bit of extra space. In a nutshell, your ruler should be blue. Your marker should be located at the beginning and end of the song, if you want to export the whole song, and you need to give a little space at the front and back. Next, we need to make sure that all the sound is routed out correctly. You have to check three things on each track. First, make sure the track or tracks you want exported are not muted. If the M button is yellow, you are not going to hear that track in your mix down. Secondly, you also need to make sure that the monitor button is disabled. That means that it's gray, not yellow. If the button is yellow, you won't hear that track on your audio mix down. Thirdly, you need to make sure that your outputs for each track are selected and valid. It's a good idea to check each track before you do the mix down. I've just opened the inspector and now I'm going to select each track to make sure it's routed to my stereo out bus. 
And after all this preparation, we are finally ready to export. Let's go to the File menu or Cubase menu on your Mac and select Export Audio Mixdown. The Export Audio Mixdown dialog window opens. We're going to be learning about all the options on this window later on in this course. In this tutorial, we'll just adjust the basic parameters to make sure your project can play on a CD for a CD player. First of all, give your file a meaningful name. Click in the File Name field and just type in the name. Press Enter when you've finished. The path is where we want to save the file on our computer. We must make a selection here. Use the Choose button to navigate to the folder where you want to store this file. Unless you've got a directory structure in mind that's well organized, it is a good idea to save the mix down to the audio folder of your current project. That's so it doesn't become lost and so that you can easily import it into the project if you need to. Now let's talk about file format. Most CD burning programs need a standard WAV file. However, there are many other formats to choose from that you can export to. We are going to export to a standard WAV file. Let's take a look at the Audio Engine Output section now. We've got a number of options here for sample rate, but the sample rate for CDs is 44.1 kHz, so that is what you must choose if you want your CD to play in a regular CD player. The bit depth for CDs is 16-bit. The other bit depths won't play in a CD player. By the way, if you're burning your audio files to disk to give to a company who's going to be mastering your music, try to provide them with the 24-bit WAV files instead of 16-bit. 24-bit files won't play in a CD player, but this data CD will give your mastering company a higher quality source product to work with. Of course, you'll need to have started your project in 24-bit so that all of your recording was done at this bit depth. You can't up it after the fact. We'll be learning later on in this course about how to set up your project at a 24-bit depth. Check real-time export if you've got an external MIDI instrument whose audio is coming back into Cubase. This ensures the MIDI data is properly sent to the external instrument and then recorded back in as audio signal. You won't hear your MIDI work in the mixdown if you miss this step. In the channel selection area, check the output bus you've got your tracks routed to. And let's look at the import into project section. Check audio track to import your stereo mix down wave file right into your current project onto an audio track. This automatically loads your file into the pool, which we'll learn about later on. And then we can listen to it right away to see if we like the way it sounds. Check here to load the mix down into a new project. If we check close dialog after export, this will close this window automatically after the export is complete. And I'm almost ready to click the export button. Oops, I see that I haven't selected a path. Let's click on this drop down arrow. Here we can choose a path or use project audio folder. Let me just drag the export audio mix down window a bit to the left so you can see these options that fly out to the right. Let's opt for the project audio folder. And let's reposition the dialog window. And we're ready to click export. We get a status percentage display. And leave your computer alone while Cubase is exporting. If you mess something up, you can click the cancel button to stop the export. Our export is complete. Let's close the export audio mixdown window. And Cubase has imported my new mixdown to a new stereo track. What you want to do now is have a listen to that new mix down, solo it to make sure that all the tracks are there, etc., and that you set the locators properly. You can press the S button to solo the stereo mix down, and this will mute all the other tracks. Press the play button or your space bar to start playback. And stop your playback when you're done checking and testing. Now you are ready to burn your exported WAV file to a CD. Cubase doesn't burn CDs, you do this with CD burning software. Be sure you set the program to burn an audio CD, not a data CD, unless you're exporting 24-bit files for mastering. In that case, you'd need a data CD. If you're burning a CD for professional retail use, you may wish to use a professional CD burning product, like WaveLab or Architect. And this concludes our lesson about exporting a Cubase project to a CD-ready WAV file.